What's buzzing today, Buzz, or shall we say weekend? Because we got your weekend and it starts now. We're headed to Morehouse for the Platform Summit 2014. So stay in the stream to get the buzz behind the buzz. And we take you all the way to Sunday with Dryer Buzz on WALK. We're going behind the music. Spread the buzz. The story that gets to the point that you were making before the event is when I went to high school, after my parents got here, and I told uh, the high school counselor that was advising me that I wanted to be an engineer, you know, Cuban engineer, right? Imagine that. Um, he looked at my grades and he looked at my uh, family's financial capability and said, you know, uh, you should be a mechanic instead. How good is it going to get? Experiential. Uh, I, think, uh, I think that future is coming. You know, we have actually begun to change our, our work environment. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, we, I just came from visiting one of our offices in Dallas and uh, we've taken all the cubicles away. No cubicles. You won't see a cubicle in the space. Nobody has an assigned seating. It's a collaboration area. And people work virtually uh, in their own and then they come together in groups. So it, it's a combination of working virtually uh, as an individual, but then when the right time is, you, you gather there, you collaborate, and this means you have engineers, you have IT professionals, you have marketing teams all coming together to serve a customer need. And we use them not just as influencers, but in this case, educators. Each artist created an original song based on the past season, and they were designed helpfully to help them catch up. So it was basically a lyrical cheat sheet to get our target up to speed for season four. So I ask you, do you claim your truth? Do you? No one is going to move the crowd every time. Even Oprah Winfrey talks about struggling as a broadcaster until she had the opportunity of her own talk show involved in Out Loud Inc., a digital technology speaking platform. There's just not a person here, and I'm really convinced anywhere in the world, that I could not help find their human sticky stuff to bolster their task at hand. Most of us don't come from well-connected families or generations of college-educated professionals. Odds are, if we do graduate college and then go to graduate school, we don't end up in the innovations business for lots of reasons, but most people don't. Most people don't. We stick out, and our challenges are real. A Latino entrepreneur that I met not long ago, a former investment banker, was telling me about his pitch to, his, to a VC. I see people shaking their head because you know where I'm going with this. As he's walking in the door, the guy says to him, well, you don't look like an entrepreneur. And so my friend was like, oh, I know it was downhill from there. And of course it was. It was downhill. I'm sure some of you can relate. I certainly could. I didn't exactly come from bastions of diversity in the law or uh, in journalism. But I got to tell you, I have never, ever felt more invisible than I have in this business. Last year, I'm standing there with some incredibly powerful entrepreneurs, investors, and I'm making no headway. We're talking zero. And real or not, I'm feeling my race and gender like this, right? So I go out and I buy The Invisible Man, which I've never read by Ralph Ellison. And his words written in the 1950s, oh boy, did they hit me. And he writes, I am invisible, understand, simply because people refuse to see me, like the bottleless heads you see sometimes in circus sideshows. It is as though I have been surrounded by mirrors of hard, distorted glass. When they approach me, they see only my surroundings themselves or figments of their imagination, indeed, everything and anything except me. Here's the thing, I learned three critical lessons here. One, it forced me to ask myself, what am I doing? I have choices, just like we all have choices. I realized how deeply I believe in creating and pushing the envelope beyond what we know. And two, I really missed, I really missed a potential opportunity here, right? Because I was feeling out of my league because I'm so new to the innovations business. I mean, I'm talking new. So new that when I was telling a friend last year that I've been asked to speak at the S. XSW conference. He looked at me and he was like, what is she talking about? He was like, oh, I think you mean South by South. I was like, yeah, 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 that one, South by Southwest. I was so busy trying to prove that I, you know, deserve to be there to these guys that I didn't see the opportunity for me to connect on a personal level. I mean, maybe I should have just said that, hey, I'm kind of new to this. You know, maybe it would have worked. Maybe, maybe not, but the point is I didn't try. You know, too busy trying to be smart. Lastly, I realized there's a certain latitude in the innovations business, which is this. If we claim it, 
there is some latitude there. Because what are we doing? We're in a world about doing things differently. Since there's no set formula, I say, let our conviction fuel a practice of injecting relevant humanity into our professional efforts. I've found for me, I've found this, that it's in that messy, complicated place that I'm most likely to move my best well, When you read that inscription on there that's all uh, written, it's, it, it, it's not much different from what's going on today. Inspiration leads to innovation. I made that magazine on a Mac 512K. Uh, well, the first Mac I had was a 128K Mac. I have the passion to be your occupation, you know? Um, there's a lot of people who hate their jobs. So if you can encourage you know, your, your kids to do something that they feel good about, uh, and also to look broadly with them, you know? Seeds um, curriculum. And by that we mean that our circle members will have access to resources and credit suites globally. We have 45,000 employees around the world, and the entrepreneur circle members will essentially be members of the family. And so if there's expertise that they need in their industry, or in a geography that they may be looking at, if they need help. Forward. But we can expand that even further into the world of material or physical goods. And so if you think about cars, cars solve a transportation problem. Of course, you buy a car because you like the way that it looks and you like the interior, it goes very fast, or, you know, it's got spinners on it, or in the case of the Cadillac, it's a Cadillac, but, you know, um, most people or everybody buys a car because they're trying to get from point A to point B. Uh, launching Impact America Fund, I uh, thought about, you know, how did I launch this fund and what did it take for me to truly reconcile my identities, my experiences, my life work, my passions, to get to this point, to do exactly uh, what I think I'm here to do. Uh, and inability and, and not knowing how to listen uh, didn't allow me to really uh, take the advice they were giving me and tailor it and update uh, and enhance myself to be greater, uh, to you know, be a greater entrepreneur and yeah. transition into the next. So that can even be people. One of the most difficult things I think as an entrepreneur to do is to not only identify great talent, but to keep great talent, specifically, uh, particularly if the business you have is a smallish business. If you talk to um, people like Eric Casey's Lean Startup, he'll tell you that you should ask that question between every 30 to 90 days, like a reevaluation of is this the right path or should we pivot? Um, I went to Lee Summers High School. They live in a dorm on a college campus for five weeks and they're studying tech and computer science and entrepreneurship and math and science. And there's a whole social justice curriculum, there's a social skills curriculum, they're learning public speaking. And the way I sell it is that the person who gets to hold on to themselves the most at the end of the day, while making money to take care of their responsibilities, is the winner. And when you go to Silicon Valley, you look at a lot of these tech companies, purple hair, tattoos, it, it really doesn't matter because they have a skill set. That The skill set is what matters. But the disconnect, I, 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 I'm unable to, especially in Atlanta where our culture, especially urban culture, hip hop, that is what drives urban youth in Atlanta. That's, that's the bottom line. I'm gonna sit here in this room, my blood, yeah.